All right, guys, in this lecture, we're actually going to go ahead and install SAS. And SAS is distributed as a Ruby gem. So what that means is that we're going to have to install Ruby first to be able to then install these Ruby gems, one of which is SAS. So let's go ahead and do that. Now on a Windows machine, the easiest way to get Ruby is just to use this Ruby installer from rubyinstaller.org. On the Linux distribution, you can use your package manager such as aptitude and open up the terminal, use apt-get install ruby or ruby-full and that's going to install all you need. And on a Mac, ruby actually comes pre-installed, so you won't have to do anything usually. But if you do, you can also use your package manager. Now in this lecture, I'm going to go through all the installation steps for Windows. And then after that, we're going to look at how we can install SAS once we have Ruby installed. So let's first go ahead and download this Ruby installer. And that's going to take us to this downloads page where we're just going to select the most recent version. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and click on save file again. And that's again going to go ahead and download the installer file for us. And we can then again either run this right from inside our browser or check the downloads folder. Now, once we run our installation file, it's going to take us to our installation wizard again. So let's go ahead and choose English as our language. And then we're going to accept the license, click on next. And the default directory is okay in our case, but make sure you click this add Ruby executables to your path because that's going to allow us to use Ruby right from inside our command line later on. And once you have this selected, just click on install and that's going to take care of all the installation for us. All right, that's all. We have Ruby installed and we can hit finish. So now we can use Ruby from our command line or terminal to install SAS. So on a Windows machine, we can open up our command line by just hitting the Windows button then typing in cmd for command and hit enter for the command prompt. And in here we can now use Ruby to install SAS. Now on a Linux or Mac OS X system, you can open up your terminal as well and then use the exact same commands. Now the installation is actually fairly simple. So the only command we need is gem install SAS. And that's going to tell Ruby to download SAS and install it on our system. In the Linux terminal, you may have to use sudo before it to have admin rights and then we can just hit enter. And you may have to unlock your firewall for this or not. And then it's going to download and install SES for us. Now that's already all. We now have SES installed and we can check that by typing in SES minus V for version. And that's supposed to print out the version we have installed. And at the time of this recording, the most recent version is called Selective Steve. So if it prints out the version number for you, you're good to go. You now have all you need to start using SAS. Now, if this doesn't work for you, for example, it doesn't know the gem command, then please make sure that during the installation, you really selected that checkbox to add Ruby to your path. And if you missed that part of the lecture, please go back to the part where we went through the wizard for the Ruby installation. But if you really did that and it still doesn't work, please let me know in the discussions so that I can first help you and also update this lecture to let other students know how to handle that case. Okay, great. So now we have Sublime Text set up, we have SES set up. So now we have all the tools we need. And we can really dive into web design with SES and get rid of all the frustrations we may have had with CSS. So I hope you are as excited as I am and I will see you in the next lecture.